Today we're melting metal and pouring it into wood. I'm using a metal alloy comprised of tin and bismuth. It melts at low temperatures, which is great because it won't burn this piece of walnut. I've used it to fill in cracks and knots before, but this time I'm using it to fill in pocket holes and cover up exposed screws. Add some leftover walnut from a custom table I did. The pieces that were left over tended to be the pieces that had the most defects in them. So I'm going to cut around the defects and make a super simple bench. I'm making all the cuts with my circular saw. I guide the cross cuts with my Craig portable cross cut and the rip cuts with my straight edge guide. I'm going to start by filling in the knot. I use my kiwi knife to clean out some loose wood chips and then my rotary tool to make the cracks just a little bit wider. The metal's kind of viscous, and so it tends not to get into real thin hairline cracks. I did a quick initial sanding just to smooth out the top a little bit. Now this alloy melts at just about 280 degrees Fahrenheit. That's not really that hot. Chocolate chip cookies are baked at higher temperatures. But it is molten metal, so you do want to be careful, and I had a fire extinguisher nearby. I put a little sand in the bottom of the knot hole, which went all the way through, and then poured it right in. Now, some of it squirted out the bottom, but it really didn't even damage the paint on our studio floors that much. And the walnut didn't burn at all. There was no real black char marks. This alloy is softer than aluminum, but definitely harder than the walnut. So I just threw on an 80 grit pad and sanded it down flush to the wood. I'll clean it up with some finished sanding later. Pocket holes are one of the easiest ways to connect pieces of wood. I like this mini pocket hole jig. Doesn't take up any room in the shop. And while typically I would have these holes on the inside of the bench, but since I'm trying to turn a functional detail into an aesthetic one, I decided to leave them on the outside. A couple of screws and a little glue allowed me to connect the legs. And for the stretcher in between, I went ahead and routed and sanded that first, just because it's going to be hard to reach once it's attached to the bench. I thought about doing some pocket holes here that I could also fill in with metal, but I want to make sure that the places where I was sanding metal flush to wood were easily accessible. I recessed a couple holes and then screwed the legs to the stretcher. And since we're having fun with gimmicks, I thought I'd throw in another one of my maker quirks, and that's using Lego to make router templates. This time I'm making a template though that wraps around a corner. After checking to make sure my flush trim router bit wouldn't bump into the screws, I clamped down the template, added a couple dabs of hot glue to keep it nice and secure, and routed a recess over the screw heads, and then up and over to the top of the bench. I'm really intrigued by this idea of using something modular like Lego to make router templates. And what was handy about this application is that I could use stop blocks so they could have the same distance for these routed grooves on either side of the bench. Just three dots in. That being said though, I'm not sure I'd fully endorse this kind of corner router guide. The flat plate Legos with multiple layers stay nice and intact, but when I started using the bricks, it felt like I definitely needed the hot glue to hold it stable, and you don't really want your router template coming apart with a active router going. So in the future, I'll probably stick to two-dimensional router templates made out of Lego, where I can really layer in the plates and then just maybe use the bricks as spacers to get the height right. And obviously, you can quickly and easily make router jigs out of all sorts of scrap materials. I'm getting close to being done with my new home, and whenever I finish a home, I like to fill it with a lot of my weirder and quirkier pieces, and this bench is definitely going to be in that category. If I was making this for a client, I would have put more thought into the end patterns and probably would have made it a little bit more symmetrical. But personally, I like this kind of weird stuff. I drilled a few little extra holes in the bottom of the cavity just to create some different points of thicker metal so that the metal would grip a little bit better. I had some concerns that the hot glue I used to seal up this scrap piece to keep the metal from falling out would melt, but it didn't. It came out great. Seriously, a good hot glue gun is definitely worth it. It's one of the cheapest tools you can get, and I use it in so many different projects from woodworking to concrete casting. I heated up the metal for a little bit longer the second time, and it definitely thinned out the viscosity a little bit. So I think for future projects, I might get a little more aggressive in trying to fill in real thin cracks, and I think I can accomplish this by just turning up the heat a little bit more. Although that would increase the chances of getting burn marks in the wood. The hot glue comes off fairly easy with a chisel. I used a roundover bit to give the edges a nice radius, 
and the router bit had no trouble going through a little bit of the tin that was near the edge of the board where I filled in the knot. I sanded down the metal flush to the wood, and once the majority of the metal was removed, I switched sanding pads. Just didn't want to grind the little metal particles too far into the wood. After sanding everything to 220 grit, I wiped away the sawdust and applied a coat of polyurethane. This works well on the metal and the wood. I have a lot of fun experimenting with low stakes, easy projects like this. And I try to use them to experiment and develop skills that I can apply to higher stakes projects or custom builds for clients. And over the course of my making career, I have found that a lot of my inbound offers from clients have come from these small experimental projects where I'm showcasing something that's just a little bit different from the norm. So have fun, experiment, but be safe. Bye.